I've only known one gardener who really liked to weed. I mean, truly enjoyed weeding. Now, it doesn't need to be difficult, but I don't think many of us think that it's enjoyable. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, and I discuss everything gardening so that you can become a better gardener. Today, I'll discuss how to weed your garden. If you're new to gardening, no doubt you've heard that weeding is the least enjoyable activity. And if you've been gardening for a while, you might tend to agree with that. I don't really look at it as enjoyable or not enjoyable. I just see it as something that has to be done in the garden. It's a necessary chore. But how difficult it becomes really is up to you. Are you going to do it once a year and have a major multi-day operation? Or is it something you do on a regular basis, every day? That's my approach. Now, let's start by discussing just exactly what a weed is. It's simple. A weed is a plant that's growing in a location where you don't want it to grow. Any plant can be a weed. Even the vegetables that you're growing in your vegetable beds could ultimately become weeds if they're growing in a spot where you don't want them to grow. Gardeners tend to think of weeds as those native wild plants that blow in on the wind, the seed finds a place in our bed and starts to grow. Those are usually pretty easy to discern. They're different than the plants we're growing, and they're easy to pluck out of a bed. A lot of the other weeds may not be weeds at all. I have a lot of native wild plants growing around the edges of my garden. I'm okay with it. I'm not doing anything with that space. So for me, they're not weeds. They just happen to be native plants that are growing outside my garden. So the first step when it comes to the chore of weeding is identifying, do you even need to pull the plant out at all? Do you even need to deal with it? If it's growing in a spot that's causing no trouble and may actually be providing a habitat and food for beneficial insects, then leave it alone. But if it's growing in one of your beds, and now it might begin to interfere with the plants that you're growing intentionally, it's a weed. I have a nice section here of some watermelon radish, and it's all green. They're growing about the same distance apart. Don't see a big problem until I look closer, and I see that right here, this is not a radish. It's a weed, and very close to it, is another plant. This isn't a radish either. It's a weed. And over here, there's another one. So at first glance, this bed was pretty clean, but there were actually weeds growing here. And so these plants that are not radishes raise another important factor in determining whether it's a weed or not. Plant identification. Now, you don't have to know the names of your weeds. You don't have to know anything about them. You just have to know that if you're growing radishes and there's a plant in the middle of it that is not a radish, it's a weed. But the first part of that is recognizing what a radish looks like. And so many new gardeners have weed problems because they're afraid to pull plants, because they don't know what the plant they're growing should look like. That's one reason why I like a nice organized system, be it square foot gardening or a row system. When I see a lot of the same plants starting to pop up, if I'm brand new, I can assume that that's the kind of plant that I want to grow. And then another plant pops up with a different color and different leaves and a different size. Now it's pretty easy to recognize it as a weed. I know this is lamb's quarter, but you don't need to know that. You just need to know that this plant growing among your radishes needs to come out. I encourage that you get up close and personal with your plants. Pay attention to the description in the catalog or the picture on the seed packet. Get an idea of what the leaves should look like, and then get in and see if all the plants look the same, and if there's something that doesn't look the same, pull it. 
it's a weed. Eventually, with experience, when you start growing the same type of plants over and over again, you'll be able to do as I did. Just look and see that something is different and that that's a weed. But until you get that experience, learn about your plants. So getting to know your plants and then having a system like growing in rows or blocks, you can do a nice review. When you come out to the garden, you see your rows and then you realize there's a plant in the row, but that's not a beet. It's almost like the weeds have developed camouflage to fool us. And basically that's exactly what they've done. The weeds that survive are the weeds that look closest to the plants that we're growing. That's why plant identification is so important. Take a look at some of these examples. I always like to see green growth in my beds and there's lots of green here. But I know that the only thing that I have planted in this section is peas and it's right next to this garlic. This is a pea plant. It's pretty discernible. You can actually start seeing the little bits that will cling on to a trellis. So this is a pea, 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 but this plant right here, same color, same height, but it's a lamb's quarter. It's a weed. It doesn't match the pea. The same with this one right here. So I'll just pull it out, drop it to the ground. It'll become a nice mulch and add some material to the soil. Around this nice elephant garlic, all of these are weeds. So just pull them out, drop them to the ground, and it's as simple as that. There's a lot of good plants growing in this area, but I know from my plan that this square is peas, this square is peas, we have beets, and we have beets. And so as I look around, this is definitely not a pea or is this, or is this. So I've already weeded this square and you can see the peas are popping up. Moving over here, the beets have a very distinctive red stem. So even though these plants are similar, this one is not a beet or this one. These are very close together. I have to be careful because this Lamb's quarter is a weed, and the beets are right behind it. It can get confusing when you have different plants growing close together. Right here I have a row of speckled lettuce, I have a few rows of watermelon radishes, and then I have some purple top turnips. It all starts looking the same, but if you look close you can see this is clearly lettuce. And I've learned to know what radishes look like. This is not a radish. And I've learned what turnips look like. So believe it or not, there's only a couple weeds growing here. Once you've identified it as a weed, there really are only a handful of different methods to deal with it. The first being to just pull it out, as I've already demonstrated, and especially in vegetable gardens, that's my preferred method. You can also kill it with an herbicide. And there are synthetic herbicides, there's even some organic herbicides that can kill those plants. I'll do that in open areas, but I really don't like to do it in a vegetable bed because an herbicide that will kill a weed will probably also kill the lettuce and the beets that I'm growing right next to it. That's why I prefer pulling. You can also dig the plant out using a tool and I do a lot of this. You can cut the plant to try to end its life cycle, and that really works well with a lot of annual weeds, not so good with perennial weeds. And you can also try to smother the weed. I'll show you each of those methods, and I'll start by showing you how I cleared all the weeds out of this asparagus bed, real time. Well, to show you how easy it is to weed an entire bed, even when it's overgrown, I've let the weeds take over my asparagus bed. I didn't mulch, I watered regularly, and now the weeds are going wild. So I'm going to show you in real time how quickly you can weed an entire bed if you just get to it. 
Let's get started. So I'm just pulling the weeds and letting them drop onto the soil. They will become new mulch. And as soon as I finish this project, I'm going to mulch. I'm just pulling the weeds and letting them drop. Working in an orderly system from left to right in this case. It helps that most of these weeds are actually pretty big because they're easy to grab, easy to pull out, and easy to see what I've done and what I haven't done yet. You really want to keep control over the weeds if you can to avoid a task like this. I don't like weeding any more than any other, but it has to be done. In a bed like this, in fact, in all the other beds, as I water, I'll come out and I'll pull a weed. So there are dozens and dozens of weeds here. If I pulled just three or four every day I came out to water, none of these weeds would be here because the asparagus has been in the ground for weeks and I've been watering it for weeks. So I could have used that time to weed on a gradual daily basis instead of waiting to the point where it's overgrown. But even then you can see this doesn't take much time. I've set aside a few minutes devoted to taking care of this bed. I want my asparagus to not have any competition, it's relatively shallow roots, and so weeds will absorb nutrients that the asparagus can use much better. And as you can see, I'm almost done with this bed. All my other beds I've kept up with for the most part. And as soon as this bed is weeded and mulched, I won't have to worry about weeding very much at all. Now the soil is nice and moist. That helps the weeds pull out in one piece. And that's it. This entire bed is weeded. I'm going to leave the weeds on the surface. None of them have flowered. They're not seeding. And when I add some straw mulch on top, all of this will eventually decompose and enrich the soil. I don't like to use herbicides, as I've already stated in my vegetable garden. I don't like using synthetic chemicals at all. But in an area like this, where it's nothing but rock, the only thing that's growing is a weed and it's extremely difficult to get in and hand pull all of these weeds. I let them grow just to show you how bad it can be. If you attack them when they're small you can keep them under control but if you let them grow they go crazy and about the only way to deal with them in this case is with an herbicide. I'll use a tank sprayer with an herbicide in a big area like this. Now, it's up to you to determine what type of herbicide is best for you. So be sure and ask questions at your nursery or garden center because even some of the organic herbicides can be very harmful. Make sure you read all of the directions on the label before applying an herbicide. It's not a good idea to use a spray on a windy day because the herbicide can easily blow onto plants you want to keep or even your neighbor's plants. But if you want to use an herbicide in like a perennial flower bed, you can still do it. Instead of using a spray, consider using a paintbrush, especially a foam paintbrush that you can dip in the herbicide and then paint it onto the leaves of the plant that you're trying to get rid of.
There are many tools available to deal with weeds, either digging them out or cutting them off. Now, one of the ones I use a lot of is just a slender trowel. If I'm working in a bed, especially if I'm planting something new, this is real easy to just stick in and pop out the plant. There are specific tools to deal with dandelions, but something as simple as just a flat blade screwdriver can also be stuck into the ground to pry out a plant. I also like this new one that I discovered a few years ago. It's a hori hori. It achieves the same purpose as both the trowel and the screwdriver, but it's a little bit longer. So I can stick this in and it's very effective for digging out dandelions and deep rooted plants. Now, those are the type of plants that you need to get the root because they're perennial. A dandelion will come back every year. And if you just cut it down, the root will just send up a new plant. Annual weeds are different. Those are the type of weeds that are really the most common in most of our gardens. They'll grow, they'll flower, they'll seed, and then they'll die. So if you can stop that process, like with a set of hand pruners where you can just cut down the weed, you don't have to worry about disturbing the soil. And because you've cut the main stock, it's not going to flower and set seed. It will die before it ever reaches that point. Hoes have been used for millennia to deal with weeds. And you're probably familiar with the good old classic straight bladed hoe. I like this one. This is a stirrup hoe. The idea of the hoe is basically to do what the screwdriver or the hori hori does. It gets into the ground to try to dig out the root and for the annual weeds to just chop off the stock. One of the reasons I like this stirrup hoe is because it's quick, it's fast. This whole area was covered with weeds and I used one of these to clear the entire space. Another effective way to deal with weeds is to smother them. Now, most of the weeds we have growing in our garden come in on the wind, and a lot of those seeds need sunlight to germinate. But if we can cover our beds with a thick layer of mulch, not only do we cut out that sunlight so the weeds are less likely to germinate, but even if they do germinate, they're not gonna have light to grow and they're going to die. We're smothering them. In this area here where I put down this wood chip mulch about five to six inches deep, it's been in place for about nine months and I have virtually no weeds growing here. Definitely none of the annual weeds that start with those seeds. It's been a couple weeks since I weeded this asparagus bed and the first thing I did was to put down a two inch layer of straw and grass and leaves. And I have a few weeds popping up mostly straw from the seeds that were in that mulch. The rest of it is pretty clear, and the few weeds that are here will be very easy to deal with. An important consideration as you weed your garden is recognizing that no single method will work all by itself. I use all five of these that I've shown you, depending on what kind of weed I have and where I'm doing my weeding. While I prefer to just pluck a single weed every day from every bed and keep it simple, occasionally I might have to revert to the tools because I'll be starting a new bed in a new area. Or maybe I went on vacation and the weeds took over. You need to be aware of that. Find what works best for you and what works best will probably be a combination of these factors to include the possibility of herbicides. Please let me know if you have any comments or questions below. And if you want to continue to see more of these gardening videos, well then subscribe to the Gardener Scott channel if you haven't already done so. And be sure to click on the bell so you're notified when new videos and the Monday live stream come out. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening. <music>